Everybody, it's Zach again at NewTutor.com. Wanted to come in and make a video. I've been under attack lately. I've been under attack by the Hank Hanegraaff fans. I did a Hank Hanegraaff video uh, a few weeks ago, and uh, about a month, a few months ago, I guess. And uh, um, I guess somebody posted it on a forum that was pro Hank Hanegraaff, and I've just been getting email after email and message after message and comment after comment on my Hank Hanegraaff. Uh, uh, video and it's about basically when Hank Hanegraaff went off on Mark chapter 7 verse 19 and used that text Mark chapter 7 verse 19 uh, used that text as proof that all things are now unclean and that the ceremonial law of the Jews is no longer in effect well first off number one there is no ceremonial law you'll never find the phrase ceremonial law inside anywhere in the Bible Anywhere in the Bible, this, the phrase ceremonial law or moral law do not appear. It does not exist. It's created by man's theology because they understand there's a contradiction with the keeping of the law and being saved by grace through faith. You can't have both. Well, yes, we're all saved by grace through faith, but we keep the we keep the law. We keep God's commandments. We keep God's instructions because we love him. It's, it's a showing of our faith. It shows who, who is truly saved by Messiah. We can't keep the law to be saved. We keep the law because we are saved. And so, anyway, these people have been just on my back. And because Hank Hanegraaff, because I went off on Hank Hanegraaff talking about uh, these, this, these, this craziness that Mark 7, verse 19, shows and proves that all things are unclean. Or all things are clean. And that's just not true. And so we go through Acts chapter 10. And I show people on Acts chapter 10 how their interpretation of Acts chapter 10 is wrong. Verse 28 in Acts chapter 10 rounds it all out. It was about people. It was never about food. Peter understands in verse 28 that, oh, I see. I get it now. This, was, this whole vision was about man being clean. And unclean. It had nothing to do with food. He was saying that God has showed me that I should not call any man unclean because it was rabbinical law, not Torah law, not biblical law. It was man's made, man made rabbinical law that you should not eat with a Gentile. When the Bible, in fact, says the exact opposite, the Torah says, hey, listen, any Gentile can be grafted in. All they have to do is keep the commandments. That's it. It's that simple. God's instructions aren't hard. In fact, he says so. He says they're not hard. We have made it hard. Man has made it hard. And we've made it even harder over the generations. Like people, When people like Hank Hanegraaff add doctrine, uh, man-made theology, you know, with moral law and ceremonial law, and try to tell you that the, the law is done away with. Because when you, do, when you do that, when you try to convince people that the law is done away with, what, you, what, what results because of that is lawlessness. And so, all right, after we've been through this, I've been hampered by these guys who, who are trying to tell me, and basically I've had them up against the wall. Uh, I've explained Acts chapter 10. I've explained Mark 7, Mark 7 verse 19. And still, they they like, oh, yeah, but what about you know 1 Timothy chapter 4? What about that? And here's 1 Timothy chapter 4. Here's the verse they give me. It says right here, Zach, don't you understand? For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God in prayer. See right here, it tells you that every creature of God is good. <laughs> oh, read the verse. Read, read the verse. It, listen to that. You know, you know the big if everyone says? You know, if. If is a big word. If is a huge word. If. The word if can have huge implications if used in a sentence. If, if, if. Look at that word. We see if. First Timothy 4, verse 4. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused. If it be received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. Well, okay. What do we know that is sanctified by the word? What does the word say is sanctified? What does sanctified mean? Sanctified means approved. It means set apart. It means different than uh, the unclean. Okay, you can't, you, there's things that are clean, there's things that are holy, and there's things that God says are not holy, things that are not clean, unclean. You know, unclean and profane. You know, are clean, clean and profane. There's a difference there. And so we need to understand what is sanctified. What God says is set apart. And sanctified is that word. We know, where does it say in the word that things are sanctified, that things are set apart for food? Well, it's Leviticus chapter 11. 
So right here we see Timothy saying, hey, for every, for every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if, if it be received with thanksgiving for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. What is sanctified by the word of God? Uh, the Torah tells us what's sanctified, what's set apart. The things that are set apart are what he describes in Leviticus chapter 11. Pork is not set apart. Pork is unholy. Pork is profane. Pork, what God calls, is an abomination. And so we see right here, you cannot use this verse, uh, 1 Timothy 4, verse 4, that uh, you know everything is clean, everything is food. No, no, there's only thing, the only things that are meant to be eaten, the only things that were set aside to be received with thanksgiving that are sanctified are what, what the Bible, what the Torah tells us in Leviticus chapter 11. It's as simple as that. You cannot let anybody tell you that, uh, 1 Timothy 4, verse 4, is a way to show you that we can eat all things because that's absolutely ridiculous. And none of the apostles, the apostle Paul, the disciples, never thought any, any of that. And we see from Peter in Acts chapter 10, he said, I have never eaten anything unclean. Never. This is 10 years after Messiah. So if this is 10 years after Messiah, why, did, why is Peter still not eating ham sandwiches or pork chops? It's because he knew it was wrong to do so. And absolutely, he would never do so. And he rounds it out in verse 28 in Acts chapter 10. He tells us, hey, listen, this was never about food. This was about man. God has shown me that no man, no man should be called unclean. Okay, so let's move on. Let's, let's, let's stay in uh, 1 Timothy, though, uh, chapter 4. People have told me, you know, you, you've been deceived, and you're now what they say here, uh, uh, doctrine. you're teaching doctrines of devils. I'm teaching a doctrine of a devil because I'm, I'm adhering to the Torah, the, 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 the first five books of the Bible. Are you telling me that the first five books of the Bible is a doctrine of a devil when it was written and spoken by the very, very mouth of God? You better go back and re-examine your thought process on that. If you're really ready to tell God that you believe that someone who believes in the Torah, the first five books of the Bible is a doctrine of a devil, you got some serious problems coming your way, pal. Go back and re read your scriptures. Go back and examine this whole theology that the law is done away with. The law is not done away with. The law shows us what sin is. We would never even know we were sinners if we didn't know what the law was. How do we know what sin is? 1 John 3, 4, sin is transgression of the law. If we don't know what sin is, we'll never, we'll never know, you know, if we don't know what the law is, we'll never know what sin is. We won't know that we're falling short of the kingdom. But we all fall short, and that's why we need the Messiah. Messiah came, Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, in his Hebrew name, came to this earth, and he died for our sins. It's as simple as that. And so, I don't, I don't understand why, if you, if you get rid of the law, you've gotten rid of uh, the definition of sin. And Paul says that over and over again in his scriptures. We just need to understand that many of the things that Paul wrote were very uh, difficult to understand. Peter tells us this. Peter says, hey, listen, the things that Paul, to the unlearned, are going to be hard to understand. Uh, he writes some things that are hard for some to understand. And you people in 21st century Christianity, uh, who I was a part of, I was one of these people who said, hey, it's okay to eat pork. And then I went back and I read the scriptures. And absolutely, in fact, I was staring right in the face of truth. And it was saying that, hey, listen, uh, we've interpreted some things wrong in modern-day Christianity. We have. We have done that. And so uh, I, I just challenge you. Go back, read your Bible. Go back and examine these verses that people try to use to say, hey, you can eat all things. Because God doesn't change. Our Father is the same today, yesterday, and forever. He's not going to change. And Yeshua, Messiah, Jesus is the same as the Father. How can they be one and then each have different ways? That's impossible. So go back, re-examine the scriptures. I'm sure you'll find, come to the same conclusion I have. If you haven't, please message me. We'll talk. I was in your, when you're in your shoes a few years ago, a couple years ago, and so I, I know what you're thinking. I was definitely a pork eater, and no one was going to tell me different until I said, you know what, I'm going to go back and read these scriptures and see what there is to this. They have to have, I mean, why, how can anyone be this far off? And I realized it was me. I was the one who was far off. And I needed to come back to the ways of God. And the ways of God, um, what defines wickedness and, 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 and righteousness, is defined only in his Torah. So if I want to be walking along his ways, I need to get back to the ways that are described in the Torah. 
and that is uh, his instructions. So anyway, I just wanted to throw that out there. I've been attacked this week, and it's been fun. I love the debate. I love getting into debates. If anyone wants to debate me on YouTube in a live debate, we can do this. We can record it on Skype uh, and then put it on YouTube. I would love to do that sometime. So get a hold of me if you want to do something like that. All right, that's it. Uh, Have fun. Uh, Have a good week. Go home. Read your Bible. Thanks. (laughs)